Hello everyone, Pally Tuff here. Welcome to Gunfire Reborn, a roguelite that came out in November 2021 and flew under my radar at the time. It recently had a Steam sale and I picked the game up. I'm about four to five hours in and I'm having an absolute blast. If you guys enjoy our roguelike content, if you enjoyed watching Hades, Rogue Legacy, or even Crab Champions, I think that, ooh, let's not forget about Risk of Rain, I think this game is right in your wheelhouse and I wanted to show you a little bit of it today. I'm playing on my level 25 character. I'm gonna start a new adventure. And if this is received well, if you guys do want to see, see more i do have the ability of making a new profile but i thought for this first episode it would be fun to show you some of the unlocks that i have the character i'm playing as is lee not to be confused with other lees <laughs> and i only have uh two other characters maybe four other characters unlocked but there is a wide roster and all of these characters approach challenges differently during a run so let's get our run underway there is four player co-op and uh, woo, it's hard. The enemies get really, really strong. I was actually surprised. I've only done a single player run once and I was surprised how well it went. So this chest has kind of been our starting lobby here. This is the beginning of our run. There's a portal to continue. In order to open this chest, you have to spend some talent points and I'll show you guys the talent tree here pretty soon. We have three choices to pick from. What is called Argus. Notice the gun name, it's stats underneath. And then we have some variable rolls, kind of like Diablo loot. So this one has a 50% chance to cause an explosion that deals corrosion damage when killing an enemy. This one is rate of fire increase and each hit gains three weapon damage up to 15, but you lose stacks when you miss. That's funny because the rainbow literally can't miss. So let's go in with that. I have grenades that I can throw out with my Q ability. I also have a special charge that I can build up to hurl a fireball forward. And those effects on both the, the fireball and the grenade are kind of unique to my character. The rainbow is a weapon that auto homes onto enemies, so you don't even have to be good at shooting. It has an alternate fire that allows you to kind of send a target out. So he's my target now, and I can even go around this corner and then melt this guy down, theoretically. Now, this is just the first weapon that we found on this run, and we're likely to find many more as we go. We can hold only two additional guns at a time, though, and then we have our initial weapon that we started the run with. That crack in the wall lets us know that there is a vault nearby. Once again, this is an upgrade that I could do because I've spent some points in the talent tree, which again is why I thought it'd be better to show you guys the game on a slightly leveled up character rather than a low level character. All right, you know, a brand new character that just finished the tutorial because I could do this fun stuff. I've been playing this game almost exclusively in multiplayer. So I just started when reloading 20% damage taken and we get movement speed. That was a scroll. So that was like a passive buff that's applied to our character. That's our reward for clearing out that vault on the side. That vault was only optional content. In order to progress out of this biome, we just need to keep following the main path here. If that guy's gonna sit behind line of sight, we can use our grenade to call down a fireball to deal big damage to him. This big guy on the left does have a hefty shield, but we just use our charged flame to take him down. Uh, I should probably call these by the actual name. So the spiritual flame is my E and the blazing meteor is my Q. That's important to know because we may get buffs the, like this, which, specialize in buffing one particular aspect of our character. So Blazing Rain, when Blazing Rain Meteor, uh, I'll read through these really quick. I'm gonna go with Flame Resonance. Each enemy hit by Blazing Meteor or Spiritual Flame, so it's double dipping, will take 10% increased fire damage and deal 10% less damage to me. And that stacks up to three times as well. So while I am trying to give a very low level view of what this game is about and kind of like, what the new player experience can be. I don't know anything about min-maxing. So if you guys want to leave any tips that you have down in the comments, I know this game is popular. A lot of people really enjoy this game. And I feel so late to the party checking it out. Uh, this guy right here is a vendor. We could talk to him and potentially upgrade some of our weapons. It would only cost 50 to make our rainbow a little bit better. And since it's the only weapon we have, I'm going to go ahead and commit to that cost. There are three different ammo types. The rainbow is using a green ammunition. There's also a blue and a beige one. The beige one is large. And you can see how much ammo I have pretty easily. 
uh, at the bottom right of the screen, even for the guns that I'm not using. So this one's more trap oriented. You can see that there are a lot of things around here that may try to kill me without it even being an enemy. If I step on one of these pads, that's really gonna suck. Luckily, our E ability actually passes through enemies, so it has some innate piercing. So when those guys grouped up in the corner there, we were able to blow them up very, very quickly. Opening up this chest, we find another scroll. Every six shot gains 80% damage. It's reset when reloading. So technically, we could fire 50 shots with the rainbow, even though it's this weird curved kind of attack. So that should be a pretty good one for us. Uh, we have a grenade dropping down on the far side. The roof is continuing to open up as crossbowmen make their way down. Let's just get a nice E right there. That spearman was about to charge me there as well. So a lot of the enemies have basic move sets that they tend to follow, different move types they like to do. I don't know why that guy blew up. So you have one tool in your arsenal to help with that, and that's your shift. Every three seconds, I can use my shift to kind of dodge out of the way. So if there's a Spearman, for instance, about to charge forward, that was a perfect example. Thank you, Spearman. We can use our shift to move away from it. Uh, inside of this chest, Blazing, in blazing uh, Meteor deals 200% damage if it hits a single enemy. I really like this one for taking down elites and for pumping damage into bosses. This is the Big Hippo. It's a minigun, 100% magazine capacity, but 30% increased reload time. Each hit gains three weapon damage for up to five seconds. So similar to our rainbow effect. Very cool. This chest allows us to sacrifice some of our HP to then get a buff of some kind. Uh, what my friend Muck always tells me to do is sacrifice my health for money. I don't, I don't know if you guys agree with that. Again, feel free to leave any tips you got down in the comments below. I'm just showing you the game. This is not a guide yet. We'll, we'll get there. If you guys want, you guys enjoy the content, we'll get there. Uh, pushing forward now, explosive bear on the left. We do need to give that a decent berth. Grenadiers as well as some bugs coming our way. So let's use that barrel. The barrel just took down a few of the beetles. They die in a single shot anyway. Well, we're in between groups. Let me go ahead and reload my gun here. One of the problems with our current setup is that both of our weapons use the same type of ammunition, which can be difficult to recover. Nice E down the hallway takes those guys out. I can't really move with this fire in the way. Hey, little buddy. This is another merchant here. This guy usually specializes in selling you things that can refill your ammo or also help your health. So I'm gonna go ahead and buy both of those. And then I kinda wanna get this arc light. It was very expensive, but I at least wanna show you guys as many guns in this first look as I can, because there's a massive, massive variety. There's a way for me to see all everything, and uh, I haven't even unlocked half of the weapons yet, so that's really encouraging me. There's already a ton of variety, and it's only gonna get better. Crossbowmen spawning in front of us, headshots will take care of that problem. Oh, they knocked that wall down. A bunch of beetles knocked the wall down. Let's call in a fireball on them. Those little cube guys are basically the banelings of this universe. If they get too close to us, we will be in trouble. All right, next door is opening up, but I want to do this as well. Those symbols on the vault mean different things. I don't know what all of them mean yet. Oh, crap. Indiana Jones, okay. Off to the side. Okay, we're fine. Oh. <laughs> that was really close. That was really close. What's going on back there? Why is there... Is there more that way? Oh, I'm not gonna check. Uh, it's odd that there's a fire trap right there. Damage taken reduced for every 1% missing health. That's pretty good. As our health gets lower, we gain more armor. Kind of like Garrosh. That's beautiful. Red chest on the right. I'm gonna head towards that. Uh, do I want to sacrifice my health again? I guess I will. We get less damage taken now anyway. So that buff really did come in clutch. Uh, calling down a fireball on this dude on the right. Wow, most of those shots were unfortunately missing. Grenadier put a bomb where I was standing, so I'm gonna go ahead and push forward. And we'll just charge up a nice fireball to pierce through every single one of those beetles pushing us. 
as I hope you can tell, as we progress in these levels, enemies do get more aggressive, more different enemy types start to show up, and density really starts to skyrocket. This is a rocket launcher. Uh, okay, I'll swap the rocket launcher out for my machine gun. Lucky shot chance, but stability decreased. Okay, so I think lucky shots are like super crits. I'm not 100% on that. Uh, capacity for blazing meteor, 50% chance to restore blazing meteor when inflicting burning effects. Cool, so I'll be able to throw out more grenades as well. I don't know if it's the same for every character, but Lee in particular seems to be like a hybrid of a spellcaster and then a shooter as well. So I can like really weave in a lot of these effects with my gunplay, which is super duper fun, super duper satisfying. Fire damage plus 25% immune to the negative effect of burning. This additive effect is doubled while in burning effects. We'll go ahead and buy that too. <gasps> this is my favorite weapon, the prism. The prism is my favorite weapon. We're dropping this thing. Actually, I kind of like the rocket launcher. Uh, so the prism basically works the same or similarly to this lightning weapon. This has a chance to chain to additional enemies. And I think this is one of my favorite weapons for clearing out large packs. However, this thing is the most satisfying thing in the entire world. First of all, it has piercing. Second of all, it has ricochet. So this guy's shield doesn't matter to me at all. We just pierce right through it. I mean, technically I could call a fireball down on him whenever I want to and do the same thing. But look at all these residual bounces inside of these tight areas. If this room was full of enemies, we'd be doing chip damage to all of them all of the time. And then I could finish them off with a very quick fireball to just get the job, job done. This vault, I do know what the symbol means. We're going to have a boss at the end of it. Uh, let me just fall back here from the Banelings as they are approaching the heavy crossbow man in the back is going to take some fire damage. Notice how like I can single out these elites with my spells. I always find that to be very, very satisfying. Uh, we are going to try to kill his adds first. I'm going to do more damage if it's just him, if I could call fireballs down on just him. So I want to do that. Our single target damage with these is like quadrupled over our AOE damage or something like that. Uh, I do have to generate energy for my E ability, so it will evolve to do AOE damage if I commit more than 30. If you look down at that E symbol at the bottom of the screen, we have like, let's say 45 energy right now. Uh, double rings would be 60. So if I get it to that second stage, at least it's going to be doing AOE damage and help me clear out a room as well. Uh, I'm going to keep up the piercing through the shield. He does expose himself every now and then. You can see with the swing. So even if uh, I didn't have a piercing weapon, I would still have plenty of opportunities to take this guy down. Well, sweet. Let's swap out to this. I've never used this before, and it has fire damage on it. Uh, throw the weapon to create an explosion. Damage type converted to fire damage. We have a reduced reload time and a lucky hit chance increase as well. I've never seen that before either. That looks like it does some cool shock stuff. So really what you're looking on the ground for, at least what my friend told me, and again, please feel free to chime in with anything I say to just give your opinion about it. If you think I'm right, if you think I'm wrong, that would be excellent. Helps me learn faster, helps people in the comments learn faster as well. Uh, I'm gonna take this increase to corrosion damage because I don't wanna be able to take poison damage. It makes me immune just like the fire one that we found earlier. I'm a big fan of that. So I've never shot this gun. Oh. Oh, that's pretty snappy. How do I throw it? Oh, my right click. Oh, God. <laughs> so can I just, does that? Okay, so there was a weapon manufacturer in Borderlands that kind of had this, the same shtick. But every time you threw the weapon, it was a massive amount of ammunition you were losing. So yeah, I'm, I think I'm using all 30 shots for the throw. The way that was balanced in Borderlands was the uh, damage of the explosion would do more if your clip was full, like if your magazine was full. I don't know if that's the case here as well. Oh, this thing's cool too, the Shrieker. I'll take this. I'm just gonna keep swapping, try to show you guys as much variety as I can. Ooh, scroll, H. Minus 50% max HP and shield slash armor, but gain two extra revives. 
No, I don't think I want that. I really rely on my shielding quite a lot. I feel like I would just die more and then have to use those revives more. Okay, here we go. This is the first boss. We're 15 minutes into this run and this is where uh, it could end here. <laughs> this is where shit gets real. Uh, let me buy ammo and health. I think I was actually full on health, so that was probably some wasted money there. And I'm also going to up the damage of this Shrieker because I feel like that's gonna be the main way I'm getting damage here. The door's open, but the boss doesn't spawn until the first person walks through. This is the same in multiplayer as well. So if you are playing with friends, you wanna make sure that you're waiting back uh, in that lobby area. This guy's hard. I think the problem is that he's faster than me. What, did that miss? Oh, crap. So I have to use my dash to avoid some of his projectiles just like that. He has an 8,000 shield. Nice dodge there. He has an 8,000 shield and 80,000 HP. So this is not going to be very easy. I need to try to keep him out of line of sight if I want to regenerate my shields, but he's actually moving on to the hill for the next phase of combat. I'm going to try to keep damage up here for as much as I can. I feel like those shouldn't be missing. I'm confused. So I'll stick to my kunai for now. The ads that he spawned were just these little banelings, not that big of a deal. Whoa, okay. Yeah, that hurt. Don't know how to dodge that. And there's a big attack. Dodge just came off cooldown. I was able to get away. Let me make sure I'm using my Qs. Let's remember those do increase single target damage. And this guy is by himself. We also have some passives that are giving us a chance to get more of those Qs back. So let's keep that up. Good jump away there. As I moved behind him, his HP is almost down. I used the pillar there to break that projectile. Couldn't get away that time though. That leap is so abrupt. One last charge and we have it. The first boss is defeated. From here, you get a littering of bonus items down on the ground. I'm gonna increase our single target damage with that. I'm also gonna swap out new random boss unlocked. As you explore further, Golem awakens. You may encounter Golem at the Eternal Palace. Oh, so for progressing and beating bosses multiple times, I'm upping the variety of bosses that I could face. Uh, negative one second for all remaining cooldowns on hit. Whoa. So the gun type is only one piece of the puzzle with these. You really should make sure that you're stopping and reading all of the effects underneath. These are really important. Oh, this is actually one of my favorite weapons too. Total weapon damage against burning enemies effect. Oh, that's awesome. So if I light a target on fire, this weapon will get more mileage. It uses a different ammunition from the kunai. So let me go ahead and swap out, but this is one of my favorite weapons and you'll see why here very soon. I actually normally get this at the start of a run. So I replace it and never find another one. It's cool to get one that is powered up. There's a rest spot here at the well as we enter the second biome. As you can see, this one is much more arid. We are in a desert now. As we keep progressing, I believe there are four bosses for an entire run. I'm going to tell you right now, though, I have never beaten the desert biome. Never made it to the end at all. We're going to start seeing new enemy types here. I like these bandits, I, were they called retainers? They're basically snipers that try to sit super far back and deal damage from afar. And they're very good at doing it. Whoa, what's that guy was burning? He was just dead. Wow. Okay, another similarity to Borderlands is that these enemies have different types of mitigation. So on Borderlands terms, this guy would have armor, uh, there's also a blue line that can go above enemies. That would be shielding. I don't know if like corrosive damage melts armor. I don't know if electricity gets rid of shields. I don't know the inner workings of the elemental system or the mitigation system in any way. I also didn't explain why I like this weapon as much as I do. Basically, you just hold down left click. There you go. I feel, I'm a huge fan of Yandu from Guardians of the Galaxy. That's not the first time I've said that. And this makes me feel like I'm just killing people with my whistles. There's once again, no aiming required at all. And I really like that in a game that's literally all about shooting. I like that there are, op I, I really like that there are options for people who aren't good at shooting because there's plenty of them out there. Perfect. Uh, Bandit in the back. Let me try to get some flames on him. He's burning now, so we should be able to melt through the rest of his defenses. 
I also don't know what those portals over there are for. Our current working theory is that there are different tile sets in this game, kind of similar to Warframe, and they all just snap together. So the path could potentially go like through that doorway on the left there. But um, our path is just a different doorway, but potentially. I don't know if that's actually true. That's just what we heard. Also, something I should be playing super duper close attention to is making sure I don't miss any of these chests. I probably have at this point. We need to make sure we don't miss any more. They get unlocked after you clear an area. Wow, that guy snuck up on me. A rogue arsonist, flamethrowers. Huge shields on these guys too. Let me try to get burning. Perfect. Now, there was a quick reload on my whistle. There we go. He dropped a gun as well. Uh, what is that? I still can't really identify stuff by sight. I always have to go up and look at it. Oh, this one's cool. This is like a chain lightning thing. 20% chance to gain more projectiles. Each hit increases weapon damage, magazine capacity, and critical hit multiplication. Damn. Yeah, I'm going to pick that up. We'll swap that out. What kind of, uh, kind of ammo does it use? Normal ammo. That's the same thing as this, unfortunately. Has a chance of dealing shock. I want to try some shock. Bye. Bye, Needles. I love you. See you again soon. <laughs> uh, enemy hit by blazing meteor, special flame, take even more damage. Perfect. All right, moving through the next portal. We are halfway to the boss here. Once again, I've never beaten that last boss. We're going to be breaking new ground if I do. I just want to say that um, in real life, we've, we've had uh, some struggles recently, and I'm very thankful that I can be Pally for a little bit. You know what I mean? Not be Walter for a little bit, but be Pally. Get lost in a, in a world, share that with you guys, and forget about my problems for a few moments. I know that may have come out of nowhere here, but I just keep thinking about it. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And I'm going to go back to the run now. Fire Lizard casting from afar. We need to make sure we get out of his way. Oh, last night I did a challenge where I hit some swordsmen. I, I killed enough and I unlocked a melee weapon in this game. I would love to try that out at some point as well. I think that could be really good. This is one of my favorite weapons for multiplayer. It's called the Bone Dragon. Uh, it does have a fire effect. What kind of ammo does it use? Um, special, so I can try it. It's um, really good at grouping up enemies just like this and then allowing me to then throw in a bunch of damage into every enemy in a single spot. I think for my character, I don't know if it's the same for other characters, this is one of the better weapons because I can also scale my fire damage as well and this one does fire damage. But I've been using this in multiplayer because it just keeps all of the enemies still. It like makes the challenge of the run lesser because of the CC. I think it's really, really strong. Uh, let me try to line aside the bandits. As you can see, they're starting to get pretty strong. Uh, keep walking this way, bud. Oh, he's confused. How did I do that? Was that lightning fire? Okay, so there's... I don't, I don't understand how it works, but there is an elemental synthesis. <gasps> it is lightning fire! Oh! Okay, that's the only one I know of. That's confusion. So what that does is if I get two elements on the same target, in this case, a lightning debuff from my weapon and then fire from my grenade, uh, we have a chance of making this guy confused, which means he will go and fight other enemies for us because we stacked those two effects on him. I know nothing about this system other than that. And I'm so surprised we just stumbled upon a synergy. That was awesome. That was awesome. Last night on our run, we um, had confusion proccing uh, in multiplayer and we didn't know what was causing it. So awesome. Very happy. <laughs> Always a good moment when I learn. Uh, that bandit is confused. We're going to let him fight at his friend, but unfortunately he died from our burning damage pretty soon after. Uh, let me see what these are back here. I do really like this gun too. I feel like I'm just saying I like every weapon. I don't, <laughs> to be clear. But this has a really good fire rate. And it's like a shotgun as well. So you can just hold down this trigger and pump damage into enemies. 
This one is called The Illusion. It's already rank four when we picked it up. Now I could be spending my money at this guy to continue to up the ranks of these things. I've been advised against doing that. So for the time being, we won't. I believe that's another vault right there. And that looks like a boss vault as well. Spiritual Flame will always inflict burning to the enemy. After casting Spiritual Flame, fire damage weapons are guaranteed to reflect burning effects on hit. Um, sure. Fiery Heart sounds fun. The characters you're seeing on the loading screen, by the way, are other playable characters as well. That little dog is who my friend Mukka normally plays. I really like this weapon. Even at long range, it gets the job done. It's got a good grouping, even as a shotgun. Okay, let's swap back out to the lightning thing. I want to try to keep this elemental combo going if I can, although it looks like this bandit is the last one. I wonder if I can get that effect on bosses. So if I use my E, this is guaranteed to be fire. Oh, but see, he's not really reacting with confusion. So maybe he's just immune. We do hit him in the back with some of that fire damage, so he is burning. I'm gonna do a full charge here and shoot it at the adds, try to finish them off. Looks like the boss had a very big AOE, so I'm gonna continue to try to just get away from him. And I'm not sure what that animation he just did was, but it scared me, so I moved. Is this doing any actual damage to his shield? Oh God, because I don't see his... No, his health is moving. <gasps> okay, so that's my first death. I have to use my revive now. It's probably from a sniper in the back. That was my only revive. So let's try to make this work. Shields are down again. Once again, I think it's from the sniper. I'm gonna try to just focus damage if I may, because if the boss dies, everyone dies. That was getting really tense, really, really tense. There are some health globules on the ground, some region globes, if you will, that we can pick up and heal our character back up as well. Oh, what's this thing? It's the Kunai fire version, right? Oh, I'm definitely gonna try this. Uh, we'll swap. I kind of want to keep the shotgun. What level is it? Rate of fire, explosion AOE, projectile speed, and lucky shot chance. This thing seems like it's pretty good. I'll swap out the shotgun. The chain lightning effect might be too strong. Oh, <gasps> my knives are back. Oh, and they're fire knives. Okay, that's my new weapon. Here we go. Give me my reward. You get a reward like this every time you do a vault. 25% elemental damage. When triggering an elemental effect, it will be passed to nearby random enemies. Whoa! So theoretically, I could be spreading multiple things of confusion just hitting a single target. If I keep spreading lightning, oh, that sounds really, really good. I don't wanna do that red chest. I don't care if it gives me a benefit. I don't think I can sacrifice my HP right now. I want, to, I want you guys to see the second boss. I think the bosses are so impressive in this game. I wanna make sure that I can get there. Sniper in the back. Just barely line of sighted that one in time. Oh, that was cool. <laughs> I've never noticed that. The uh, the uh, physics effects with interacting with the sand. This guy's gonna charge me. I need to get out of the way. Here's a fireball for him. He's confused and we'll send him back towards his friends. He actually killed both of those enemies there and made his way all the way to the elemental gunner. Uh, can I get an effect on you? I think that would be excellent. I gotta take this guy's down. He's been causing way too much havoc up here. That won't connect, line of sight. All right, bud, come here. It's just me and you now. And now that you're confused, I think it, <laughs> I don't think he's gonna do anything. <laughs> Wow, that gun killed it fast. That killed it so fast. Uh, this does corrosive damage, which is like a decay over time. I, my sneaking suspicion is that this would be good for the yellow. Again, just because of Borderlands logic, but I'm gonna keep pushing on. Uh, whoa. Okay, this thing is nuts. This thing is nuts. Okay, these guys are charging in back to the lightning. We want them both mad at each other. That's perfect. Dash away before the AOE. Let me ignite you, bud. Thank you. Look, they're both confused. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. I'm so glad that we uncovered that. Oh, that's so cool. 
Uh, damage on that guy on the left. His gunner friend goes down almost immediately as well. There's a sniper in the back here yet again. I'm going to just try to line of sight and take care of all the other ads before I push up on him. One quick fireball takes him down almost immediately. It's so funny playing this single player after playing almost exclusively co-op co over the last week because the, the guys get so tanky. Oh my God, they turn into bullet sponges in multiplayer. The fact that I can kill a bandit that quickly just by calling in a grenade on him and then like focusing him down feels really good. I'm not used to that at all. Uh, another charger coming down the hill, and that might hit me. I hit an explosive barrel next to me on accident, which certainly did not help. He has a Mega Man cannon on one of his arms. I've never even seen these guys shoot that before. Quick dash out of the way again, and I didn't do that. Here you go, but... <gasps> my gun is still targeting enemies while I'm channeling my ult. Holy crap! Good grenade there, line of sight the cannon. I can do this. Perfect. Wow. As if I didn't like the needles enough. Then they go start doing stuff like that. That is awesome. Okay, over to our left, there is another one of the vaults as well, but I believe the next area we're going to... Oh, that's a limitation of the needles. They can't open the vaults. Ooh, this one's a boss. Okay, this might be hard. I think it's always worth it trying to do the vaults though. The scrolls you get from these, the passive bonuses you get from these usually outweigh the risks. You, again, usually outweigh the risks. I don't believe the boss will spawn until we take down all of the ants, so let's try to be a little aggressive here. Start moving forward. Ooh, the way this gun works is that it just kind of auto reloads when I'm not shooting. So because I was holding down the trigger for too long there, my fire rate turned to basically nothing. That's pretty cool. Each weapon behaves so differently. I feel like every time I wield one, I learn something new about it. And granted, I'm still kind of at the beginning of the game, so I'm expecting to learn a lot. But that's been really, really encouraging as well. Just how different everything plays. Boss is in. We're going to start with some fireballs on him, if we may. Charge this up into the hardest hitting thing I can. We're breaking through that shield pretty quickly. I wonder how much that shield is compared to his health. I suppose we're about to find out. It's all of it. <laughs> Bro, what are you doing? That's kind of how I'm built too with my town. 150% <gasps> lucky shot chance for the next two shots after three consecutive critical strikes. 50% weapon damage against burning enemies. I'll try it. Oh, yeah, I'll give it a go. It also says projectiles plus one, so that means we get a double ricochet with every throw. Oh, that's cool. That's really, really cool. I think I am gonna swap out that lightning thing for this though. I think the needles are just doing more damage. Perfect. Treasure chest from the vault. Secondary skill capacity gets doubled. That's my Q. So I can hold six by default now, I believe. And those Qs are also already buffed to deal increased single target damage. Maybe I will kill this boss. Uh, plus eight capacity for Blazing Meteor. Restore one use when Blazing Meteor inflicts burning damage. So do I have a 16 capacity now? Am I understanding that right? 16? That seems ridiculous. Uh, what's this? There's a 33% chance to reset the cooldown every time you use a primary skill or dash. Okay. That's just a passive. Let me buy ammo and health as well. And then over at this guy, I'm going to up my kunai. So because it's throwing two, yeah, it's 263 times two per throw. That seems excellent. I don't think I'm going to get too many bounces in here. So we may just stick with the needle for this. Here it comes. Okay. Pull down our meteors. He has a lot of armor. And this terrifying beam attack. I think if I stay like me oh, medium range like this, I should be able to dodge it. I'm gonna deny this guy. If corrosive does rip through armor, then that's exactly what I need to do. 
Gonna hard channel this and cast through him as well. Looks like another beam coming out. He'll only do this for a certain amount of time. He will start switching things up soon. So far, we're doing a very good job of dodging, though. All of those beams moving to our right. We are chilling. As he does the animation, I can just use my shift. Now, if he traveled with me, that would be a... Okay, here we go. If he traveled with me, that would be a problem. Okay. We're getting some dogs. We could deal with dogs. Dogs are nothing. I hope the boss's arm... Oh, no! I hope his armor doesn't recharge. So that big red circle was him coming back. I don't know what this is. Corrosion. Let me back up. We can play far here, I think. I have to jump over that. And he just has a little bit of armor remaining. We're doing very well. You... Ah! Okay, that's so slow. That's so slow. I don't even need to freak out. I think I could have walked out of that. We're doing health now. We're on health. Oh, shit. I'm out of ammo with my kunai. Oh, does it use double ammo as... What in the fuck was that? How do you dodge that? Well. That's good to do it, boys. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, once again, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. It helps us out a lot. This is not a new game by any means, so any help we can get with the algorithm would be fantastic. If you guys want to see more, let me know down in the comments. This run was half an hour and we were halfway through a run. I did take a lot of time to explain stuff too, so I think we can get that number down a fair amount. These were the talents I had for this particular run. If you guys have any of these you'd like to recommend, I don't know anything about the talent tree. I haven't looked down here. I'm just focusing on the stuff I can unlock. Like I maxed out my shields. I gave myself some inscriptions to make my guns more powerful. I went down the hero tree on the right to make my fireballs more powerful. But of course, each character has a slightly different tree because all of the hero stuff on the right changes as well. So the middle of the tree buffs all of your accounts where the right side of the tree is just the character you're playing on. I really like my Firefox. And once again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to max out my health and call it a day. Appreciate you guys. I'll see you again very soon.